Welcome. Um, so for everyone in the room, if you could make sure you sign in before you go so we can keep track and grab something to eat and a coffee. Um, so welcome to our first session of the new year. Thanks everyone for joining. And we have several people joining on the webinar from across the province which is great for our presenters. So today we are hearing from the Manitoba Adolescent Treatment Center from Leslie and Lorraine. Um, so we'll learn about their services and how to access them and who is eligible. So hopefully people here can learn about services that maybe they could pass that information on to their clients and families if it's something that you think that they need. Um, so for the people on the webinar, if you have any questions for our presenters, just type them into the chat box and then I'll read them out at the end so you'll be able to get your answer. And then we'll also post a recording of the webinar onto our website. So if you miss it or if someone else wants to view it, you can share the link. All right, so for Leslie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, it says, okay, so I'm Leslie. Uh, this is not Tina, this is Lorraine Chain. Tina, unfortunately, fell ill yesterday and um, wasn't able to be here. So just a little bit about us. Um, I was the program manager up until two weeks ago when I retired from MATC, but <laughs> because I um, committed to this in June and I didn't know I was retiring, I felt obligated to get up at six this morning. <laughs> and, uh, thank you, thanks. <laughs> um, and Tina, so I manage the centralized intake for mental health uh, for child and adolescent mental health. And Tina LeClaire managed the uh, youth addiction services, centralized intake. Lorraine is a longstanding uh, centralized intake worker entering her 50th year of nursing. Um, so uh, between us, we have uh, quite a bit of experience and hopefully this is gonna be um, an informative and interactive uh, session. We want to give you as much information as possible and um, allow for as many uh, questions and uh, information exchange as possible. So next, ah, just to give you a little bit of a, of a idea of how the um, child and adolescent mental health services are structured. We are under the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority, but you know that with the um, restructuring, we will soon be under shared services. Nobody really knows how that's going to be, but centralized intake and child and adolescent mental health services will remain intact mm -hmm. with a bigger emphasis on um, merging addiction services. So as you can see on our, um, on our card, um, we are the central, you know, kind of triaging service for uh, child and adolescent mental health services that are uh, distributed through Health Sciences Center and MATC. St. Boniface used to have child and adolescent mental health services, but about 10 or 12 years ago uh, for cost cutting measures, they decided to merge those services into um, Health Sciences and MATC. Okay, so far so good. These are the services at Health Sciences Center. So I know it's a complicated system and um, you know, the, the old joke that I used to have was if my husband didn't have my number kind of in his phone, he wouldn't be able to know how to find me, you know, just by looking up child and adolescent mental health services. It's a complicated, very dense system. Um, and the, the, the short one minute presentation is, if you have any questions about any type of mental health services for children and youth under the age of 18, all you have to do is call our centralized intake number at 9589660 and we will be able to triage and answer any of your questions and send you on in the right direction so basically that you know we can, i can pretty much go home now leave you with that number and that's that's about it but just wants a little more so we'll give you a little more um, there's a variety of services that are offered at health sciences and um I just, you need to know that in order to access these services, the referral has to come through centralized intake. The other thing that's important to know is that most of our services require a referral from a physician. And I'll tell you why this is, this is so. Um, many of the services start off with a psychiatric consultation. And so um, if there's medication prescriptions or any kind of diagnostics, they need to keep the physician in the loop. We, the psychiatrists don't carry 
the patients, the clients, the kids, the families, they're consultative only. And they do do some follow-up, but they always decant to the family physician or the pediatrician. <clears throat> you know, we have, we do have a lot of kids, a number of kids who don't have an active physician. They will go to walk-ins, but Lorraine actually is the queen of finding physicians for people. So, um, uh, and we do a lot of that. Like we have a lot of families who come in and say, you know, we don't have a physician. We'll help them to find a physician. We have some linkages with pediatricians. We can call in some favors for, you know, complicated cases, but um, they all need to start off with a, a family physician for the most part. Um, Consult Liaison Service is a service that may be a particular interest to you guys. It is a service that um, uh, is directed for kids with uh, medical problems. So mental health issues as it relates to medical, uh, you know, DSM-3 diagnoses. So they are directly linked to cancer care, to respiratory, to neurology, to diabetes clinic. Um, we occasionally get a referral from uh, the community that hasn't been linked. Um, to uh, consult liaison and they do accept community referrals. Um, things like um, kids who present with chronic stomach problems, uh, medically cleared or chronic headaches medically cleared will go to health sciences, but they'll go to the outpatient mental health service, the OWNS uh, service, which is just a generalized mental health service. The other um, kind of specialty service is cause. This is the um, acute care. This is Dr. Bob Steinberg. Um, he runs an acute service, although now with wait times, the um, lead in is about four to six weeks. We're lucky if we can get a two week it's appointment. It's less now because they have an extra doctor. Oh, it's less now because weeks. they have an, an extra doctor, two to three weeks. It's, but you know, you can see that acute, you know, is a two to three week wait for an acute is not um, such an immediate response. So anything that requires a more urgent uh, response to that, it goes through a merger mobile crisis service. Eating disorder is exactly that. Um, we get a lot of requests for kind of disordered eating or overweight kids, kids who have problems, you know, monitoring their intake. They don't, they'll do maybe one consult for that, but um, it's really for the, um, you know, the, the well-known eating disorders, the anorexia, the bulimics, those types of issues. And intensive, um, uh, intensive crisis, the ICAT service, there's a lot of acronyms. I did send you the um, abbreviation um, sheet, yeah. Um, so ICATS, we can't refer to ICATS. ICATS is a service that is the decant treatment service for cause. The only people that can refer to that is emergency or the cause folks directly. So there are some restricted, I don't want to use the word restricted, but I'll use the word restricted, um, restricted services that are open only to internal consults. Um, but that, you know, shouldn't worry people who are referring because these kids get to where they need to go once they uh, get into the system. So uh, anything on that? Any, any, it's pretty clear. MATC services, um, it's quite a robust uh, little diagram there. Um, I'm going to start uh, kind of from the top and, and work around clockwise. So centralized intake service is the service that I used to manage. It's the mental health service. That's the 660 number. Um, youth addiction centralized intake is the uh, intake service that Tina manages. She now manages the entire service. Um, and um, you can, the services are pretty much merged. So if you call either number, you'll get to the right um, intake service. Uh, psychiatric assessment uh, under six used to, we should, we've got to take that bubble out. And I thought we did. There used to be an under six clinic when early childhood clinic, which is underneath it, was on a bit of a hiatus because uh, Julia Ningi was um, uh, transitioning into the medical director position. But now early childhood is back on the books and they deal with all kids under six. 
no matter what. If centralized intake gets a referral for kids um, who are, you know, four and three and are having some behavioral or developmental issues, we always send them back to a child development clinic. If their development seems to be um, on the right track and there's just kind of behavioral parenting issues, we will send to early childhood. Um, the, I think the youngest referral we ever got was for a one and a half year old. And um, we didn't send that child to child development clinic. We did refer the parent for some parenting um, uh, you know, sessions and some supports in that in that way, and then referred her back to the physician just to make sure that everything was okay for you know developmentally. Uh, the neurodevelopmental service. I think this must be a service that you guys are fairly familiar with. Um, it is the Autism Tourette's service. They've merged. Tourette's used to be at, at St. Boniface. It's now merged with MATC NeuroDev Services. And um, uh, School Age Autism is the teachers who are Manitoba uh, based that assist with the autism um, uh, school issues. NeuroDev used to uh, be very strongly linked with CDS. It still is strongly linked with CDS, but one of the missing pieces uh, historically from NeuroDev was a physician involvement, and they're starting to move more towards that with regards to um, a physician referral. These kids are very challenging, as you can imagine, to decant out of the service. It's very much a, a lifelong um, issue and um, they are they get gridlocked with their um, wait times. The wait time currently now to see a psychiatrist for any type of diagnosis or medication monitoring is 18 months. It's it's eye it is eye dropping and jaw opening um, or jaw dropping and eye opening. It's it's shocking and it's shocking to those of us. Um, within the system as well, and they're working on it. They've had a lot of um, staff turnover and um, a lot of increase in volume of, um, uh, of requests for service. The school system um, right now is, you know, very big on uh, query autism referrals and um, it really it really gridlocks the system they're trying to develop um, an ADOS uh, kind of a clinic but you know the diagnostics of autism is um, it takes a long time as you can imagine and um, they want to do a, a responsible job so right now the wait time is 18 months um, the ADHD service that I also used to manage um, is exactly that we like to have, it, it's a, both a diagnostic and a treatment clinic. We too have had some staff turnover, but the wait times are about three to four months to see a psychiatrist. Um, the, um, the, we are down a mental health clinician for family-based treatment and the service is undergoing a bit of a, a transformation, but um, uh, we see kids, um, six and over, six and over. Student mental health resource team is a uh, two-man team who is designed, designed to go out and assist schools with uh, various issues around mental health. Um, they work very closely with community child and uh, adolescent treatment service, the CCATS service. So, um, if there's any kind of school base, we get we get a lot of referrals, you know, kid having trouble in school, um, you know, bright can do the job, but just, you know, not not cutting the grade at school. We'll send the student mental health team out. Um, this is so boring, you guys, even I'm getting a little fatigued. Let's liven it up somehow. Come on. Questions, comments, anything. Um, the Royal and Northern Telehealth Service, RANTS for short, um, it has undergone a huge transformation with Jordan's Principal uh, dollars. So there is a Jordan's Principal initiative that um, has um, funded this service. It went from three clinicians to 13 in a matter of four weeks. Like as quickly as they could hire these clinicians, they um, 
they develop the service. They are responsible for follow-up service, mental health follow-up service to 63 um, uh, uh, community res reservation, community Aboriginal community services up north, uh, as well as the rural uh, rural areas. Uh, outside of Manitoba. So if you have any clients that are uh, going back home to any of the northern communities or any of the rural communities, they are uh, the follow-up folks for mental health. Uh, CCATS is a generalized uh, treatment service for um, you know, basically family therapy, any kind of depressive types of therapy, anything that needs to start off therapy and not physician related. You don't need a physician referral for this, but, um, uh, and the wait time is about long-term treatment is seven to nine seven up to a year yeah wait but, but they, they have, have a brief treatment i have to tell you that most of the wait times for all of these programs both at health sciences and at matc averages about six months it's um it's a problem not only for the referral services but also for us because we can't service people you know in the appropriate timely manner that we we would like to ccats has um an interesting format where uh, it's called a brief treatment. They call it a BCAT, a uh, brief treatment. So everybody that um, gets sent to CCATS will get an appointment with a clinician within 10 days to two weeks, just to do a little bit of a boost to get, do a little bit of a, you know, Band-Aid therapy. They get offered three to five sessions. And um, if that does the trick, that's great. Otherwise they go on to the wait list for further treatment that will take about, you know, six months to, to get there. Uh, the other, the youth forensics is exactly that, youth forensics. We have a child and adolescent uh, psychologist and a couple of psychiatrists who are uh, dedicated to the youth center for any kids uh, who are involved with the law and have charges. We often get some community-based kids who have, you know, kind of circled the law. They parents have caught them. They've been caught shoplifting, or they've been involved in some assaultative behavior um, at school, and they always uh, get uh, decanted to youth forensics. Um, intensive treatment and um, the uh, reintegrative services are the inpatient services that are internally um referred to so I, I won't get into that um any questions so far about that yes oh great thanks thank you so i have in the past helped with central intake and i for occupational therapy physiotherapy speech and audiology yes um we get a lot of query adhd referrals i know i was gonna talk to you about that going to you guys perhaps and <laughs> well, so who's ref yes, sorry for the web for the web people. Um, okay, so you, who the question was the OTPT and other disciplines get referrals from whom? They can be self referrals, but many of them with query ADHD okay. from Right, so referrals get to Sky for query ADHD, and the question is, are they best served within the child and adolescent mental health system? You know, here I'm going to give you, yes, absolutely. Are there distinctions that you're providing that we wouldn't be providing? Or, like, I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's a great question. It's, it's a great question and I was going to address this because um, before I left, centralized intake was getting um, a lot of referrals, not a lot, but I would say more than what I was used to getting in the past. With um, From OTPT, there was um, a, a robust amount of collateral information and assessments um, with a further question of, you know, please clarify diagnostics. Um, for ADHD, and I think there were, there might have been a query autism in there as well, but it was clarified diagnostics. So the, the short answer is the final diagnosis for autism and ADHD are made by 
physicians or psychiatrists. But having said that, all of your collateral information that you provide to us, I know is very time consuming, but was incredibly valuable for us because we didn't have to source out that information or duplicate that information. So um, that's my best answer. I mean, I don't know why physicians would be sending a query ADHD to Sky unless there's a final resting place at a physician. No, I, I think it's because they're looking for strategies for the family, right? They're looking for an occupational therapist to provide okay. questions for how they can... Okay, okay. Okay. Is after they get their diagnosis, yes. Is there follow-up? Okay, 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 okay. So, for the webinar people, the question is, the second part of the question is, um, once the diagnosis is made, where is the best landing place for treatment? Um, whether it's here for OTPT, whatever, or whether it's at MATC for at the ADHD clinic or a variety of, okay. So here's the, I'm, I'm going to give you our dilemma. We don't have standalone OT. We have an OT, we have an OT that is embedded within the service, but in order to get to that OT, and the reason that we have her embedded is that we don't run private OT services. So, um, in order to get to the OT at ADHD and at neuro, and where else do they have OTs and at inpatient, you have to be part of that program. Now, a lot of times the child only needs an OT um, and that's a bit of a problem. So you guys provide standalone OT services. Yes? Yes. Yes. I Yes. <laughs> is that's cool. It's cool. And the criteria is not for kids that fall under the mental health system that we can be providing those. So if it's provided by MATC, like where is the but it's well, not if they can get a diagnosis of ADHD and then get access to an OT, then it is. They don't but they don't get OT. Right. So, well, I mean, the OT is embedded at, as, but it, they, you know, they have to be referred to um, within the team. It's it's not a simple, you know, it's 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 not. Um, so, you know, you want to talk about, um, you know, providing the best, most streamlined continuum of service, and um, I know for school age kids, like for. Um, um, Sky is mainly designed for OT for kids what age, at what age? Preschool, Preschool exactly. Well, the, right. So the problem that everybody in the community has are for the school age kids who require OT. And that's a universal problem. And we get, you know, one physician in particular who, despite the fact that we've told him or her that um, um, we don't provide singular OT services, at, you know, we're not an OT clinic, we're not an OT service provider, we're a continuum of service as the child needs it you know, within the services that they're already in. Um, they insist on referring these kids for OT. Um, you know, we'll, we take a look at it, but you know, we have one, one OT at ADHD and we average, you know, she has a caseload of perhaps 90 kids. I know that, you know, you guys have huge caseloads too. Um, and I know that school age OT service provision is a huge systemic problem. So I, you know, I don't know what the right answer is. You know, kids will wait for service. It's not a guarantee that they're going to get OT services within our uh, our program. The services are limited. Um, you know, we do a lot of parent ed, so it's it's there's there's no easy answer. What do you, what have you guys done in the past with these referrals? Well, I, I think we like the OTC that we provide strategies. With or without a diagnosis, they provide functional strategies. Right. What is going on for that parent? Is this for school age kids? Yeah, you see, the preschool is, is a no brainer for us. You know, the preschool kids in, in our world always default to 
um, to here, to Sky, unless there's an obvious mental health problem. And ADHD is not terribly included in that. It, you know, um, autism, yes. You know, these kids, you, the earlier they get to our neurodev service, the better it is, you know, for, uh, um, uh, for them. So yes, they become embedded, but for ADHD, because we don't take the under sixes, we always default to Sky. If you wanna talk school age kids, let's talk. Who, who can take the school age kids? Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, moving on. Uh, so again, these are the entry um, entry numbers. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, um, like for example, the question that you have, um, you know, if you continue to have any of these service delivery questions or wait time questions or access questions, just call the 660 number. It always goes into um, a queue and you get called within that working day. So, um, and the youth addictions number is 692. The other um, services that we wanted to put in was children's emergency, which also has the capacity, CARAC is the, um, come on, child and adult, I don't know, it's, um, <laughs> Just a minute, I will think. You guys, I've been retired for two weeks. It all, it's all out of my brain. Um, rapid Assessment Clinic, Child and Adolescent Rapid Assessment Clinic. Ta-da. Um, so that is psychiatry. That's a psychiatry offshoot from Children's Emerge as well as CAUSE. So CAUSE is up to three weeks and CARAC is three days, um, and they have the capacity to send to ICATS. We do not. Um, phone hours of operation, 8.30 to 4, our admin hours. That is it, folks. I really wish it could have been a little more exciting, um, but you know. Okay, great. Um, so you said earlier the kids get to the neurodevelopmental so great question you have great questions i'm saying this because i'm trying to encourage other great questions um so we have a we have a strong oh sorry uh, the question was um how early um should kids get to neurodev our neurodev clinic and how do they get there is that a good paraphrase? Okay. So the answer is we have a very strong linkage with uh, Child Development Clinic. Jana, Dr. Janice Blampy used to work at MATC. And um, if we get like physicians and um, other services are really, really good at identifying these kids under the age of five so they can get to child dev um, pretty early. Once they get diagnosed there, um, they will, they don't have an automatic send to neurodev. It all depends on the needs of the kid. And in fact, we don't really want to have an automatic decant to neurodevelopmental services. They hook them up with CDC. They hook them up with a variety of education educational um, components and they, you know, send them on their way. But we do, we will often get a report just to have, just to know that they're coming, um, that they could be coming. <coughs> the, um, if there's a pro, if they've tried to do a number of medication um, interventions and they haven't been successful or they, the kid is on, um, complicated medications or some medications under, you know, the age of five, six, they'll send them to NeuroDev just to make sure that um, they'll, they're on the right meds and to assist with that. We also have a partnership with, well, uh, with St. Amant as well. So that whole NeuroDev community is very well interlinked. And I don't, other than the new diagnostics, like the school age diagnostics, we're getting a lot of kids ages eight to 11 or 12, you know, query, um, query autism. 
we're getting a lot of what the, the old Asperger diagnosis, now the social pragmatic communication disorder that um, is teased out and doesn't fall under autism, but is very frustrating for, um, you know, the, the families because it's very similarly, you know, presented. Um, so the, the, the neurodev community is very, very well linked. Okay, yes, yes. The Okay, good, okay. good question, good question. The question is, does NeuroDev accept kids with FASD? The short answer is no. They, it's, it's an autism diagnosis. That's it. Um, and it's, you know, there's no PDD NOS anymore. And um, so it's very, very, um, tight the the acceptance the FASD kids this is what we do and we've developed this over time because of the need um, intake has uh, a couple of psychiatrists we do assess at intakes these are for we skim uh, the kids off the top who require um, any type of psychiatric intervention. These kids are in crisis. They're, you know, they've got a crisis depression. They've got a crisis anxiety. Um, these are kids that can't wait the months and months for uh, for treatment. Within that, uh, mostly referred by CFS, but outside, you know, agencies and uh, as well, we will do a, a one-time medication consultation uh, with one of our doctors, in particular Dr. Shahid Hossein, who has developed quite a practice of, um, of seeing these kids and doing a medication consultation. These kids are not particularly therapeutic candidates. They don't, you know, do the talk therapy. They don't do, uh, and we don't offer um, you know, art therapy, play therapy, they're trying to develop that. We usually will send these kids to all know for some type of play or attachment therapy, if that's what makes sense. Um, but we do provide a, a medication uh, consultation for these kids. I know. So the comment was that in the rural areas, there's limited services for these kids. Under shared health, this will change. This will change, but it's going to take some time. But I will tell you this, you know, if we get kids rurally who are in, you know, in trouble, like really in trouble and the families are really in trouble, um, there are psychiatrists in the rural areas and community mental health. They're uh, all um, hired by, they're all MATC psychiatrists, so we do have some wiggle room in getting them in to see those psychiatrists, but we can't, we can't tell the rural areas what to do. We can ask and plead. Um, we've had some luck, you know, but we'll never leave a family in crisis. Like, if there is a family in crisis and, you know, the, the foster, it, it's, you know, placement breakdown or parents who have taken time off of work because leave of absences from work who can't manage their kids, you know, like that, that's a huge problem and we will absolutely step up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Oh, sure. How do I do that? Maybe I can't. I don't know what to do. Um, does the did the um, did those guys get those cards in the? Uh, no, but I could scan it and I could put it. On yeah, there. perfect. That's great. Um, anybody else? Yes. Hi. How is it determined whether a child with very autism goes to CBC versus neurodevelopment? Age. So if they're under five. Sorry, the question was how uh, how do you distinguish between who goes for diagnostics for autism to child development versus uh, neurodevelopmental service? And the answer is age. Any any child under five goes to CDC. Anything else? Yes. Good. No problem. Um, 
you spoke about the rural and northern telehealth services being a follow-up. What is the initial? Oh, sorry. I, it's also, um, sorry, okay, right. Sorry, the <laughs> webinar, for the webinar people. Sorry, sorry. Uh, thank God they can't see my face. Okay, the question was, um, and for the webinar people who can't see my face, think Kim Kardashian. Um, so, but a little taller. Um, okay, so the question was, a rural and northern telehealth service, um, It's uh, is it just a follow-up service and what do they follow up? So my apologies, it isn't just a follow-up service. It is targeted only for rural and northern communities, but it is both diagnostic as well as treatment. They have a psychiatrist, a 0.8 psychiatrist, and they have 13 clinicians, and they do a spectacular job for anybody in rural and northern um, indigenous communities. Um, anything else? Okay. Anything on the webinar? No, there was just that one question. Okay, okay, great. So you guys, I, I thank you for coming and uh, thanks for getting up so early. If you have any questions or you think of any questions, just give the 660 number a call and we're happy to answer and speak with you about anything. Thanks guys, you do great work. Thank you.